Watch you guys, today we're taking a look at how to create a file server for free with no software. I'm going to be using this mini PC from B-Link, it's the EQ14. It's around about £155 in England and about $200 in America. It does come with an, uh, an actual HDMI cable, a small little power cable here. No power brick with this one because this is such a low powered device, but you get a little power cable, uh, user manual and the actual mini PC itself. Now, if you have another computer or an old computer lying around, you can use one of those if you want to. The reason why I'm using this is because it's small and low powered and it can sit in a corner somewhere running and I can use it for a file server. So on the front, we have that USB 3.2 port and also that 3.5 millimeter audio, clear CMOS and that USB-C port power button. And we also have that power LED light on the front as well. Nothing on the side for this particular model, as you'd expect, because it's a budget mini PC. But on the back, we do have the expansion area right here. And then we have uh, two USB 3.2 ports here. Also another USB 2.0 port, a maximum 4K 60 Hertz HDMI ports there. Two of those for dual display and two one gigabit Ethernet LAN ports on here and our AC input there so that's pretty much what this mini pc has to offer uh, it does have a pretty nice uh, intel twin lake n150 cpu in here which is four cores and four threads with a maximum turbo of 3.6 gigahertz six megabytes of l3 smart cache as well i'm going to remove the bottom here and show you inside before i set the uh, server up so you can actually see uh, what it's like so I've removed the rubber grommets and I'm just going to remove the four screws so I can gain access inside because I want to be able to put in another drive for file storage here so let me go ahead and remove these screws here and then remove the actual bottom by pulling the little plastic tab here so there we go inside nice and uh, compact as you'd expect we do have that heat sink which I'll remove in a second to put the second drive in because this does support two uh, m.2 slots on here we have that memory module here that memory module is a sodium ddr4 3200 megahertz uh, maximum 16 gigabytes on here and that's what's in here i would have liked to have seen more memory here but 16 gigabytes should be fine and it is only a single slot there by the looks of it doesn't look like we can put dual memory on here which would have been nice but we have that one slot there so let me go ahead and put that back in and I'll remove the heat sink so we can gain access uh, to the bottom there where the drives are. So also on this little device here, we don't have the two and a half inch bay on here no more. They used to have that on this actual model, but now they have two M.2 slots on here, which you can populate for storage and for your main drive. So let me quickly remove these two screws here. Now underneath here, there will be a dual M.2 2280 PCIe 3.0 SSD slots. And these are for your uh, actual drives. Now it does come uh, with an optional 500 gigabyte drive here, which we also have maximum of four terabytes of storage, which we can put inside here on this one right here. So if we wanted to put an extra four terabytes, you can do right here. And also, if you wanted to replace the drive that's already in there, you could do and put a bigger drive in there as well, which would also add more storage in there. Underneath there, there might be either the Wi-Fi card, which is the 2.4 uh, gig and also 5 gig dual band Wi-Fi 6 on there, which is an Intel AX101. Also, Bluetooth 5.2 is supported on this device as well. Now, the beauty of this device as well is it has an additional function on auto power on wake up on LAN uh, type of support here, which is great uh, for file sharing and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is quickly put this two terabyte in here. Uh, this is just a Western Digital Black here that I had lying around. So I'm just going to go ahead and screw this into the actual uh, PC and then we can get this buttoned up and I'll quickly show you how easy it is to set this up as a file sharing server on your local network. Now, like I said already, you don't really need to purchase a mini PC to actually do this. You could use an old PC that you have lying around. If you've got one, you can actually just use that as your little server. You can just install Windows 10 on it, or you can install uh, Windows 11, whatever you want to put on yours, you can do. This already comes with Windows 11 pre-installed on here. So that's an added bonus, and it's just going to save me some time. 
I'm just going to quickly put these screws back in and we can move on with setting up our file server. OK, so I've booted up the mini PC now for the first time and got it all set up. And what we want to do here first is we're going to set up uh, the actual network settings here. So let's go ahead and go into control panel here. Once control panels open, we need to go to network and internet and open that selection up there. Also go to network and sharing center. We're going to open that up. And what we want to do here is we want to go to change uh, advanced sharing settings and we want to make sure that we have all the correct settings set up so our little mini PC or server is going to be visible on the network. Again, this is a real basic way of setting up a file sharing server. So once we're inside here, we can go to advanced sharing. And what we want to do is we want to make sure our private settings are turned on for file and printer sharing and also network discovery. And we also can see their set up network connection devices automatically. We don't really need to worry about the public's uh, setting because we're not going to be accessing this outside the network. And again, all the other networks, you can make sure password protection sharing is turned off and we should be pretty much good to go from here. Now, like I said before, we don't need to make this too complicated. This is a really basic and easy setup that anyone can set up at home. And again, you can set up a Plex server on this little mini PC, but that's for another video. But we're just going to be setting up a, an easy, simple file sharing server. So let's close these settings off now. Now we've got the mini PC set up the way we want. And what I want to do here is we're going to go over to the next step, which is sharing a folder on here or we can even share a drive if we wanted to but let's go ahead and we're going to share a folder now we need to set up the drive because it's a brand new drive it would have unallocated space on it which means we can't use it so right click on the start button and go to device manager from here you're going to see a drive uh, which is disk one in this case right click on it and go new simple volume wizard open this up and go next and go next again because we're going to use the whole drive. Give it a drive letter. Drive D is fine. And now we can change the volume uh, name. And we're going to change this to, say, storage or something like that. Leave the performer quick format. And we can leave the file system as NTFS. And click next. And uh, click finish. And now that is preparing our drive for us. It doesn't take long because we did the quick format. And it should be just formatting that drive and finishing off. There we go. We're all set. So what we need to do now is create some shares for our network. So all we need to do here now is we're going to go into this PC and go into the storage drive here and we can create a folder here and right click create folder and give it a name. We can call this say share, but you can call it whatever folder name you want to call it and you can create as many folders as you like uh, to share on your network. And you can gain access to this by giving certain people access or you can give access to everyone. So right click on this and go to properties and under the share tab here, click on share. And there we go. All we need to do now is click on the drop down right here and give access to everyone. And that's what we want to do. Click add and everyone will now have read access, but we're going to give it read and write access and click share. It's now going to ask us uh, the network discovery and file sharing. What do we want to do? So I'm going to say, no, make the network that I'm connected to private network. This is because we've set it up as that. But if you're setting it up as a public network, then you can set the yes, turn the uh, network discovery on for file sharing for all public networks. But we're doing it for uh, private. Now it's telling us that we have the path here, which is called server and backslash share. So that is going to be our path. So we need to just make note of that. And you can email that to someone if you want to, or you can copy the link and send it to them. So let's have a quick look at advanced sharing here. You can see share this folder and you can add in a, a name of shares if you want to right here. And you can limit certain amounts of people here, but we're not going to cover that in this video. We've got enough done on here because we're trying to keep it as basic as possible for people that are not quite familiar with this type of uh, setup. So now we have it all set up right here. What we need to do now is go over to another computer on our local network and we can connect to it. So that's all we need to do now. So I'm gonna head over to another computer and connect to this right here and set it all up. Let me just quickly paste in some information into 
this folder first so we have some data so we can see it. I'll just put in there a couple of files. So let me just go back in there and right click and paste a couple of folders with some files inside here. And that should be good enough to share so far. And there you go. There's a couple of videos that I've just created here. So all we need to do now is close this off, head over to the other computer on the network. And we're going to go over there right now, go to settings. And what we want to do is we want to go to uh, the actual network settings right here. So go to network and internet. And if we take a quick look inside the ethernet settings, you can see we have got it already set up to private network. If you're on public, then make sure you set to private network and we should be pretty much good to go here. And we're all the same as the other computer. So we should be able to see those files on the local network. Next, we want to go back into our settings panel here. We want to come down to advanced network settings. And from there, we want to come down to advanced sharing settings as well. And make sure that your private networks are all set up right here on this computer so we can actually see the data on the network. So you can see I've got identical mirrored settings right here on this computer and the same on the other computer. I've made sure that all of the settings are absolutely identical and no passwords are set on this one either. So we should be able to connect and uh, see the files that we've just put onto our file server. So next, all we need to do now is what we need to do is go into our file explorer so we can map a network drive. So I'm gonna go file explorer here and make sure you're on this PC. And what we need to do here is going to go up to where it says the three dots, click on the here and click map network drive. Click on this one and we're going to leave it as drive Z. That's fine. And for the folder, we need to give it a path. And remember that path we had on our settings. It was backslash backslash server and then backslash share. That's what we had it set to. So let's go ahead and type that out quickly. Remember, it has to be identical to how you set it up. And you should now be able to browse that. And you can now see that we do have the path right here. So all we need to do now, is select that and click OK and then click Finish. And straight away, you should see it populate onto the screen. And there we go. So now if we go inside here, you will see the actual files. So let me go back in there again and go inside. And there we have our files. And now we can transfer files across the network to our little server and we can create other stuff as well. You can see and play them as well. And it's a great way of sharing files around the home to all your devices that are on the same network. You can share files, photos, videos, and all sorts of types of documents, text documents and things like that all over the uh, local network. So it's really easy to do. And that's pretty much it. So if you want to set one of these up and you want to get yourself one of these little B-Link EQ14s, than you can do. They're around about $209, which is about 155, 157 English pounds. And that's pretty much it. If you don't want to use one of these, you can always use a old PC that you have lying around and set up a basic uh, file sharing server. It's that simple and no software is needed. But if you need something a bit more advanced than that, then obviously there is plenty of other things out there to use like a TrueNAS, OpenMediaVault, Proxmox, and loads of other ones like uh, Unraid. There's plenty of options to choose from if you want to set up uh, your little home mini PC. And I've made videos on how to do that on previous devices as well. You can check out my playlists and also some of my previous videos on how to set this up. Anyway, with that said, I think that is going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three, I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.